Gail Madden. Wow. Um, she is someone who's trying to learn a craft and she is interested in learning all aspects of that craft. Um, she's someone who wants a new challenge every once in a while or she gets really bored. Um, inquisitive still looking. That's who I am, someone in the dark trying to find out the answers. In the theater, things can be said about human existence and about society that can't be said in the political milieu in which they existed. Because artists have a way of transforming reality so that the message gets across, but it is not um, it's not a it's not an openly political statement, even though it may in fact be a very political statement. And I think that artists, in many senses, and all the definitions of of artists, and and are some of the bravest people when it comes to making statements about how we live and who we are. How do you become a character and climb inside them is a tricky thing. I think you have to you have to love the play. You have to read the play. You have to really understand what the message of that character is, what the journey of that character is, what the what the motive of that character is. What does that character want out of the situations they've been put in? And then you climb inside and decide that for those two hours or those two weeks or those endless rehearsals, it, you have to learn to want that too as much as the character does. So there's a moment, I think, when you actually do that. And sometimes you don't like the character. And sometimes it's someone that you would never be or don't want to be. And so that's a more difficult role. But I think that you can learn to like something about that character or learn to like something about what they want or what they are doing with the other characters. There aren't. I don't think that there are too many totally evil or totally unlikable person in people in plays, possibly Richard III, but you know, I'm not going to do that. So I think you have to you have to be that you have to be where they are, understand where they're coming from, understand what happened before the curtain opened to make them who they are, whether they're drunk or whether they're a, 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 just an unkind, cruel mother or a, or a, or a prostitute or, a, or some sort of nefarious character that means ill to the other characters on the stage or is helpless in the situation they're in. 
for me, because of my background, probably the biggest challenge was to play the nun in doubt, even in a couple of scenes. Um, because I knew that character really, really well. I knew that um, rigid, um, hard nun who in her own world, in her own environment, thinks she's doing absolutely the right thing. Um, thinks she's, you know, God is behind her, the church may abandon her, but she has the moral rectitude and the moral certainty to do the right thing until she doesn't. And, oh gosh, who is my, my inspiration? Um, I suppose I'm inspired by a lot of people in, in different situations. Um, we talked earlier about Meryl Streep, and I think Meryl Streep is a is a just a, the consummate actress in terms of the in terms of the the variety of roles that she plays. Um, not that I will ever be, you know, more than three thousand miles behind her shoes, but I. I think it's interesting to watch her process and how she does that and how she becomes who she is and, and how she, I, I remember there was this wonderful segment um, of Meryl Streep on the Ellen DeGeneres show where Ellen handed her, I think, um, a recipe for something like oatmeal or, you know, something that everybody makes. and had her read it as a teenage girl, as an old woman, as, a, as a, a, a woman who's just found out that her husband has cheated on her. And, you know, and she was able to do that in an instant. The thing about performing and being on stage is nothing um, beats that sort of sinking, I don't want to do it, I can't wait to get out there, feeling, standing in the wings with a live audience out there. It's completely different. Um, you do have, I mean, I think everybody has nerves, um, but you're, if you've done the rehearsal, if you've done the work, you're ready to go. You want to show people this character. Um, you want to show them what, what this play is all about. Um, you want to walk out there. Um, so w what really changes is you can sense the audience out there and you know because you've been in an audience, you know that they really are hoping to be caught up in the story. They want it to be good. They want the story to be told. They want to be part of the performance. And they can be and are part of the performance if you lift them onto the stage with you. Um, so if they are sort of entranced and you don't see, you don't hear a lot of shifting and coughing and people getting up and leaving, which is scary, but um, if they're with you on the stage waiting and hoping and laughing and crying with you, then it's, a, then it's an experience in the whole theater. And that's what's different, I think. About that's the thing I think that I would like to do is run something for longer than the two or three nights or two, three performances that we would do here because it changes, simply because it changes each time you do it and because the character evolves as you evolve and as the interaction with your partners on stage evolve. And so the last performance is a different play from the first performance. Whether one's better or not, who knows? The audience knows. It's in the hands of the audience to figure out, once you've done the work, whether it's worth watching or not. But you change through the course of a play. 
I suppose it's always been in the back of my brain that, you know, it would be, it's fun to dress up and show off and where else can you do it um, with license but on the stage. So that's, that's what I love about it. I like it all is the bottom line, I suppose. I like to put it together. I like to be in it. I like to dress the set. I like to watch. I love to go to the theater. So all of those things. And I like to read plays. So all of those things about theater, about acting, about dressing the character, about the makeup, about putting the stage together, it's all, well, great fun for me and great learning for me. I will tell you that I think we all act, and we all act as soon as we can figure out what gestures, what words, what behavior gets us what we want. So I would say that people start acting around two, and some of us just carry on forever. Um, but I think, I think to learn acting, to get a skill, there are a few things. I, I, th I think your skills change as you age because your life experience changes you. Your ability to understand the underlying emotions of situations and plays changes so that you understand much more a, a play like The Housewife of Kabul or um, Doubt or um, the two plays now that are at the rep, the two Lyndon Johnson plays, which are historical plays but wonderful plays, or the, and the plays about um, the August Wilson plays to understand the culture out of which those came. Um, and the struggle for black freedom and independence um, in, in the inner city. Um, we said, and, okay, let's do a play. And the, and the first play that we tried to do was um, 84 Charing Cross Road. And I sort of directed that with much help from Catherine. And um, we, we did 84 Charing Cross Road for a reason, and that was that it's an epistolary play, which means the whole play is letters. So people could read <laughs> because people did not want to memorize. So we had split the stage into half an apartment in New York and half a bookstore in London and um, read the letters back and forth and did some, you know, obviously did some acting and costumes and lighting. The questions in this interview have been intriguing and yeah, I've been acting because I haven't said any bad words, but I, I think that, um, no, I mean, I, I, love, I love acting and everything about the theater, and so this interview has gotten me to talk about how I really feel about being there and doing it. So while we're all acting all the time, I think this is the real me. So if people live at Panorama who have the same little seed bug that I have had um, well nurtured and kept in the cupboard for a long time, um, I would say by all means do it. Make yourself known. Step out on the stage. Um, nothing bad happens. Um, everything good happens. It's, um, in fact, I know that that this last time with KPAN, there were some people who were new who thought that they would never cross that barrier. I'm, you know, oh, I'll, I'll work behind the scenes, but I don't want to do X. Get out there and do it. You know, no one's going to beat you up. No one's going to um, tell you that you were terrible. In fact, people are going to tell you you were wonderful. And, and you'll get it in, you know, you, the bug will bite you. And then you'll want to do it all the time. And uh, it's, just, it's just fun. It's fun to explore someone else and be someone else. You know, there's that dress-up box in Grandma's attic that's been there for a long time. And uh, you should make use of it and get out there and be in a play. What the heck.
life is short.